300 years inside the beyond. The heavens decree manifested upon the earth. Numerous hidden nation states and dungeons materialized, bringing with them a multitude of formidable monsters, signaling humanity's imminent doom. But following the initial chaos, the woke up emerged. These awakeners wielded bold abilities and, in the end, triumphed over the monsters, rescuing the world from imminent destruction. To fight the continuing chance of monsters, they delved deeper into mystery geographical regions to secure wealth and assets. Countries eventually intensified efforts to nurture awakeners aiming for generic awakening by using the age of 18. Wang. Wei third 12 months magnificence 2. Awakening unsuccessful. No designation assigned. Li Wei's a 33 12 months elegance 2. Successful awakening. Designation swordsman. Wang. As a 33 12 months magnificence 2. A successful awakening. Designation craft. Awakeners are typically categorized into three categories based totally on their roles. Fight, help, and introduction. The fight class is appeared as the most pragmatic and sought-after career, whereas the creation category, which lacks combat competencies, is typically deemed the weakest and least desired through many. Lee, having woke up as a magic swordsman, smiled proudly, raising his hands to suggest his fight classification. However, Wang Gao realized with disappointment that he had wakened right into a assist role, prompting tears. In the meantime, an unknown thirteen individuals stood before a towering crystal, there again going through the target market. After the awakening rite concluded, the lessons had been similarly categorized into four ranks. Commonplace, uncommon, hidden, and divine. Some of the target audience a student observed that Jiang Chen, the pinnacle scholar, stood before the crystal, a radiant white mild emitted from the crystal, unexpected all of the other students. The divine rank changed into the rarest and had now not been seen in their town for loads of years. It turned into rumored that once a divine rank profession seemed, it might purpose unusual phenomena within the heavens and earth. The scholars eagerly awaited to see which class Jiang Chen would belong to, with a few speculating that he may attain the divine rank a rarity not witnessed in generations. Jiang Chen's awakening had demonstrated successful. The faculty main approached Jiang, praising him as an high-quality student and a pillar of the college. The major had expected that Jiang would wake up into a fight class, but he had not expected it to be of divine rank. Continuing to speak, the major inquired about Jiang's awakened profession. Jiang glanced lower back at the principal with a glance of misunderstanding. Turning to stand the principal, Jang corrected him, stating that he had now not woke up into a combat magnificence. The principal, looking shocked, speculated that Jang is probably a guide magnificence rather. However, a green air of secrecy started out to glow around Jang as he explained that he had woke up into the introduction elegance. A divine rank religious cultivator, raising both arms, Jang tested his abilities via creating flora. His skills enabled him to accelerate the growth of plants, grass, and small animals. The most important stood along with his mouth agape, stunned by means of Jang's revelation of possessing divine power. He thought to himself that this became troublesome. Although it became a divine rank, the introduction elegance lacked combat talents and regarded useless in that regard. The unidentified guy standing beside the major reassured Jang, advising him not to be discouraged. If Jang could not combat, at least he could be safe. Non-secular cultivators had been quite valued in research fields, and being a divine rank added massive status. The foremost regretted that the promised advice for Jang become now not possible. However, he advised that if Jang pursued studies, his teacher might be able to offer an advice letter. Jang locked eyes with the principal and expressed gratitude for the records, mentioning that he could do not forget it. Stepping back from the principal and teacher, Jang indicated that he had different topics to take care of and cautioned that if his teachers had no in addition commands, he would depart the room first. As Jang walked away, students inside the audience laughed at him. One pupil with brown hair could not trust Jang's awakening changed into so vulnerable. 
This pupil had assumed Jang could wake up into a divine combat magnificence. However, rather, Jang turned into discovered to have an advent class. Every other pupil, masking his mouth with his hand, smirked and remarked on Lifestyles' unpredictable nature. They had all assumed Jang could awaken right into a combat class, but now it seemed futile, even supposing he excelled in all topics. As Jang exceeded through his friends, he ought to listen to them, murmuring about how he were treated like royalty considering arriving at the college. Now they were curious to look how long he may want to hold up the facade. Another student laughed at Jang, commenting that regardless of how hard Jang worked, he would best ever be an introduction magnificence. Meanwhile, Lin, the faculty beauty who had continuously ranked second, had woke up to a hidden rank inside the fight elegance. Jang regarded down with a smirk on his face, locating the opposite student's phrases harsh. He hadn't realized that awakening as an introduction elegance might alternate things so considerably. However, he understood that during this existence, power became paramount. Raising his hand, Jang pondered what became incorrect with being a creation elegance. A notification appeared. You've got finished your career awakening. Awaken career. Non-secular cultivator, divine rank. The outlet situation of the Zerg natural disaster gadget has been met. The initial mom insect has been unlocked. Allow the gadget to summon mom bugs with a piercing red charisma. In his eyes, Jang concluded that this energy aligned perfectly along with his gadget. Jangin became reincarnated right into a world of awakeness following his dying after the quit of the Dark Era. Dungeons and monsters filled the world, establishing a new generation where electricity changed into revered above all else. Born as an orphan, Jang knew survival in this global required rigorous schooling and look at each day. Till he reached the age of 18, he believed he needed to rely solely on himself to make a dwelling. All at once, Jang wakened a device a month ago. A notification appeared indicating that when his awakening, Jang would be certain to the Zerg gadget, and must entire the awakening as soon as possible. The machine could be fully accessible upon successful awakening. During the Dark Generation, the insect race had inflicted excessive harm upon mankind, proving to be an immensely effective adversary. Jang learned that during the last herbal catastrophe, nine out of the twelve human kings had sacrificed themselves to seal the threat. On this global, electricity became paramount to Jang. Achieving electricity mattered more than the supply, although it meant embracing the Zerg machine. With a decided gaze, Jang activated the system immediately. He was transported to another realm, finding himself standing at the pinnacle water, defensive his eyes from the extreme radiance. With a finger to his forehead, Jang realized that he become in his sea of cognizance. To his marvel, he observed himself standing before an enormous tree glowing with white light. Further notifications appeared. Professional skills, all things evolve. Requires sacrifice, may be activated once every ten days and used as soon as in line with target. Culmination of all things. By sacrificing, you may accumulate fruit growth progress and randomly acquire special end result. Boost up increase. Accelerates the increased rate of creatures currently improved by means of 10%. Mainly used for accelerating creature. Growth calm down of 8 hours after use. Jang absorbed this information, taking into account the newfound talents at his disposal inside his sea of cognizance. Rubbing his chin thoughtfully, Jang couldn't assist however smile at the system's proactive evaluation of his professional skills. Whilst those skills lacked direct combat skills, it seemed everyone could benefit his Zerg system in unique methods. Another notification seemed, indicating that system detection became complete. Jang became now able to start summoning mom bugs. Without hesitation, Jang initiated the summoning technique. A effective crimson air of secrecy materialized before him, and another notification accompanied. Summoning successful. Jang had summoned the natural catastrophe stage mom insect called Nine Miasma Wings. Jang located the manifestation of Nine Miasma Wings with a combination of curiosity and backbone. 
keen to discover the competencies of this summoned creature. Notification Mother Insect Nine Miasma Wings Lord of Death from the Abyss This creature once served as a natural disaster, triggering a catastrophic event that devastated the sector earlier than vanishing inside the 13 technology. The cutting-edge devouring cost of the Mom Insect is 0% and mom-insect intimacy is at 100%. Please complete the devouring method, breed offspring swarms, and release abilities as soon as viable. Facing the massive mom-insect, Jang could not help but marvel at its size. The insect cited itself as Little Nine and expressed fondness for its grasp. Little Nine declared hunger and eagerness to consume. Thanks to Jang's talent. The contemporary increase charge were boosted by 10%. Jang advised that there was no want for sacrifices and proceeded with the improve. At once, it had become apparent that the mom insect had to feed to degree up. A challenging prospect, Jang realized a green tornado erupted in front of him, and he could not assist but be surprised via the powerful aura emanating from the insect. All at once, Piercing pink eyes locked with Jang's gaze with a demonic charisma and intense stare. The giant insect transformed right into a human. Another notification sounded. Congratulations. Nine miasma wings have completed the lifestyle's transition and been upgraded. Gain new abilities. Feed stocks ten times the revel in with the host. Poison mist transforms into poison mist that corrodes the entirety. Sharing increases all host attributes by means of 20%. The now human Little Nine developed and embraced Jang, blushing. Jang realized that Little Nine had certainly developed right into a human form. The talent of the spiritual cultivator ought to boost up the devouring growth of the mom insect, and the experience gained from the mom insect's feed should hasten Jang's own upgrades. Moreover, Increasing all attributes via 20% would beautify fight pros. Jang smiled, knowing that his career turned into a really perfect healthy for this machine, who needed a fight class now. With a grin, Jang rested his hand on Nine Miasma's head. It seemed that by means of rapidly killing and devouring monsters, Jang may want to quickly amass an army of Zerg creatures. But a recent machine notification referred to something unsettling about the Zerg related to the Abyss and the catastrophic occasion of global destruction. The unfinished statistics indicated that this capability should be saved hidden at all fees. If determined, it can result in Jang's loss of life. In response, Jang decided to apply his identification as a creation profession and the abilities of Nine Miasma Wings as a cover while he wolfed monsters to increase his power. However, hiding was no longer Jang's preferred method. He desired to end up sturdy enough to proudly show his skills to others. Pondering over those mind, Jang gazed at the tree, thinking of his direction ahead. Suddenly, the calm water underneath his toes started to churn aggressively. Little Nine leapt into the air, floating with a menacing glare as she sensed a nearby threat. Jang's eyes widened as a towering determin appeared earlier than him. The man addressed Jang, asking if the awakening phenomenon witnessed in the course of the city can be attributed to Jang. Beads of sweat shaped on Jang's face, as he regarded greatly surprised on the parent status before him. He concluded that this man or woman was at least a master level or above. Jang questioned why this guy becomes searching for him out. Students collected around Jang and the unknown discern. This unknown guy has such a sturdy charisma, it may be felt even from this a ways away. Extreme dialogue are t ted among the scholars. Jang could not assist, but marvel, the level of his mana is at. The scholars started to take a position that this man is here for Jang Chen. There is probably a few form of war. As chatter filled the air, Jang locked eyes with the person who he regarded him as uncle. This uncle has been continuously exerting pressure on him since earlier. He is exerting pressure, but remaining silent. Jang wondered whether the uncle was checking out him. As Jang stared lower back at the man, all of sudden little Nine, licking her finger, knowledgeable Jang the uncle in the front of them poses a threat to Jang, and little Nine is pretty tempted to consume him. 
Jang sensing the bloodthirst from Little Nine thought this is not appropriate. A notification popped up. The mother insect senses that the target poses a risk to the host. The contemporary target can offer an excessive level of devouring cost. The mother insect is about to begin devouring the goal. All at once, a wave of pink aura enveloped the area because the nearby college students held their arms to protect their faces. Little Nine sensed the man as a hazard, and now it's about to provoke an aggressive assault. The students had been not able to face up to such a cold and ominous aura as they took a step again. With a sharp crimson air of secrecy emitting from Jang's left eye, he deduced that once the devouring cost is just too low, the mother insect will become even greater aggressive. Jang had to quickly find some monster for Little Nine to consume. The uncle smiled at Jang's strain. He came to the realization that this become the uncle's aim. He wanted to test Jang's energy together with his strain, but it accidentally induced the mother insect. However, happily, the system message said he had quickly suppressed the mother insect. The modern-day devouring fee of the mother insect is too low. Please begin the devouring and breeding of the mother insect as soon as feasible. Devouring values you to 10,000. Jang can nevertheless suppress the mom insect, he notion. To night time. In the end, the unknown man spoke, praising Jang for completing his awakening and is able to face up to his stress and even counterattack. The man persisted to mention that Jang is actually worth of a divine rank awakened and his destiny is limitless. The students around Jang had been amazed by using Jang's significant air of mystery, relieved that no one had observed his secret electricity. Jang inquired who he was. The man added himself as Ji Gang, the leader of the Night Watch. Ji Gang did not waste whatever and admiring Jang's power. He proposed if Jang would remember joining the Night Watch as he stretched his hand out to Jang. Amazed by means of Ji Gang's notion, Jang understood that the Night Watch business enterprise, particularly tasked by way of incredible Shia, to withstand demons and beast ties. Every time there is a beast tide or a brand new mystery realm or dungeon is generated, the Night Watch is the first to investigate or without delay put off them. Due to regular fighting on the front strains, the mortality charge of the Night Watch is pretty high, and most people keep away from it. However, it turned into exceptional for Jang. The mother insect wishes to continuously eat the flesh and blood of monsters to build up devouring cost and reproduce offspring. Jang presently in need of opportunities to stand huge monsters, and as soon as the devouring fee is full, the mother insect will begin to reproduce, and who knows how much commotion it'll motive. The desert is a superb vicinity for the breeding of the mother insect, so long as he joins the night watch. Whether it's devouring or breeding, the risks posed by way of them may be effortlessly treated. From this point of view, the Night Watch organization is extraordinarily suitable for him. G Gang stated that students may have heard some rumors about the Night Watch. However, those are all old. The surrounding college students overhearing their conversation muttered how the Night Watch has an excessive mortality rate, and most people wouldn't move there, let alone Jiang Chen. Jai Gang persevered. If Jiang is willing to join them, he's going to acquire complete schooling, and as divine rank, his assets will be limitless. Jiang, without hesitation, shook Jai Gang's hand, accepting his provide. Jiang became amazed by how Jai Gang regularly occurring his thoughts so swiftly. Jiang, closing his eyes, confessed that he had some commercial enterprise to take care of these days. He may want to experience that little nine was sad with the flip of occasions as she is hungry and desired to consume Ji Gang. As Jang departed, he turned his face barely to Jai Gang and stated that he'll report to the Night Watch after three days. Jang hastily took off, taking to the air. Jai Gang, nonetheless amazed, pondered that convincing Jang could have been greater complex and hadn't expected it to head this easily. He pondered what hidden profession Jang had as he forgot. Turning his head, two figures came in Jang's field of view. It was the eight elder from the Martial Arts Academy. The aged guy was right here to grab Jang to join their agency. However, Ji Gang said that he turned into two past due. 
The aged man, ignoring Ji Gang's remark, inquired in which the man with divine rank creation elegance careworn. Changing the subject, Uncle Wang praised Jiang for coming today as Uncle Wang's party was just about to visit a newbie-level mystery realm to get a few devices. Uncle Wang asked Jiang if he would like to enroll in them and degree up together. Jiang frequent the provide as they entered the portal. A message popped up, stating that Jiang had finished the group formation. The machine notified Jiang that he had entered the secret realm. Stepping out of the portal, Jiang couldn't assist, but surprise at the interior of the secret realm. Blue flames flickered throughout the hall as they endured to walk. The gadget said that they'd entered the undead zone. The secret realm guarantees a 100% drop fee of gadgets and gadget experience points can be calculated after the secret realm is completed. Exiting voluntarily halfway is equivalent to forfeit revel in and gadget. Uncle Wang became surprised to peer undead infantrymen and pondered why the name of the game realm device matched them with a dungeon of this rank. Jang pondered and also concluded that this dungeon is not going to be as easy to cope with. Zia at the back of Uncle Wang wondered whether or not it became because of Jang because he's a divine rank wakened a good way to stability it out. The celestial gadget matched them with a higher level in the secret realm. But Uncle Wang chimed in, noting that Jang is of the creation class, seeing the undead. The brunette girl counseled that they flip back. But Uncle Wang dismissed that notion. He knew that they do not come across mystery realms of this rank each day. How might they know the genuine strength of the undead in the event that they failed to strive? He reaffirmed that this time they could get fortunate due to Jang and get some outstanding system drops as he equipped his amazing sword. The undead squaddies roared in unison as they charged in the direction of two institution. Swinging his top-notch sword, Uncle Wang jumped in the air as he prepared to assault the undead. As he swung his sword, he requested Jang stand returned because the undead infantrymen are extra dangerous than a mean C rank monster. Once the route is obvious, they are able to improve towards the core of the dungeon. Cutting an undead soldier in half, Uncle Wang urged Zia to enhance his skills. Knowledge Uncle Wang's request. Zio Chan clasped her fingers collectively, murmuring an incantation. A blue air of secrecy radiated from her fingers as Uncle Wang's competencies have been enhanced. Gritting his enamel, Uncle Wang sliced via more than one undead infantryman. Jang, dropping back, located Uncle Wang and the others preventing the undead infantryman and wondered how they managed to live to tell the tale each time they end a dungeon. They constantly come again covered in wounds. Having said that, Zio has continually supported him. Jang even heard that Zio had grow to be an adventurer, because she changed into compelled to do so if you want to treatment her brother's eyes. Jang needed to get more potent quickly. And while he makes money, he can properly thank them for supporting him. Little Nine, gazing the scenes, inquired why there are such a lot of monsters and blood here. She wanted to consume them. Searching at the undead corpses, Jang smiled, noting that Little Nine had already sensed it. Little Nine materialized behind him with a devilish grin. Sensing Little Nine's hunger, Jang desired to test a number of Little Nine's potential. Little Nine's first potential is Poison Barrier Level 1. The capability is Corrosion. Jang lifted his hand as black-purple mist materialized within the palm of his hand. He launched Little Nine as she jumped at the undead corpses. The monster corpses were corroded the instant they made contact. Little Nine's poison mist is so effective, however, the level of the monsters is simply too low, causing the increase fee to be gradual. It seems they need to consume more monsters. As Little Nine gobbled the corpses, Jang regarded back on the others. Uncle Wang and the other two are without a doubt partners who've been teaming up for years. In this type of brief time, they have already advanced to the depths of the dungeon. Because the poison mist is a place of effectability, and even though Jang cannot control it exactly yet, there might be unintentional accidents. Then Jang ought to simply follow behind and cope with these monster corpses. All at once, a mini version of Little Nine materialized on Jang's shoulder, 
prompting him to appearance inside the course she was pointing. It appears Little Nine sensed sparkling blood. Turning to the direction Little Nine was pointing, Jang ought to see new undead rising. These undead rising were distinct from the others his team had killed. It became a shadow lurker with excessive stats, lurking in the shadows to hunt down weaker stragglers. However, in terms of attributes, those monsters were completely not so good as Jang, who has the attribute enhancement from the United Talent. Looking to check his abilities, Jang stretched out his hand. Little Nine transformed into toxic mist as he commanded, and she followed him. The shadow lurker suddenly moved towards Jang, who stood nonetheless as darkish pink mist formed around him. Jang readied himself and jumped towards the shadow lurker, fast remaining the distance. He tagged the shadow lurker with his poison mist. The shadow lurkers appeared surprised as pink mist began to envelop them. Jang raised his hand where the purple mist floated around then clenched it right into a fist. And then the shadow lurker had been right away gobbled by Little Nine. Numerous machine messages popped up, mentioning that Jang's stats have long passed up by using plus 50. Positive sufficient, those monsters are not any fit for him. And the devouring fee also will increase quicker in this manner. Little Nine sensed extra shadow lurkers appearing. There are simply so many monsters hidden on this dungeon. Jang unexpectedly felt concerned approximately Uncle Wang and the others. Smiling, Jang requested Little Nine to deal with the undead. Little Nine's shape started out to materialize with a pointy menacing appearance. A couple of minutes later, Jang arrived at Uncle Wang's place in conjunction with others. As he approached, he observed that Uncle Wang had become badly injured dealing with a set of monsters. Uncle Wang wielded his exceptional sword with both hands, his back pressed towards Zio's back. Zio extended her arms towards the monsters, poised to make use of her talents for protection against the impending attack. As the monsters closed in on Uncle Wang and Shia, shifting rapidly to assault, Uncle Wang's blood dripped onto his face. Regardless of the ache, he gritted his teeth and locked eyes with the advancing monsters. He explained to Shia that every encounter with the monsters seemed to grow more difficult, emphasizing the growing problem in defeating them. Realizing the dire situation, Uncle Wang acknowledged that they could not survive if they persisted at this pace. He turned to Shia and informed her to locate Jiang and evacuate right away. Confused, Shia looked at him and asked for clarification. In that moment of distraction, an undead soldier seized the opportunity unexpectedly advancing toward Uncle Wang with the intention to attack by surprise. Uncle Wang gripped the sword with one hand and glanced aside, sensing the presence of the undead soldier. Confused by the unfolding events, he swiftly redirected his attention towards the monster. As he noticed the sword hastily approaching his head, he clenched his teeth tightly, realizing the gravity of the situation. In that critical moment, Jiang emerged and rapidly intervened. He extended his hand in the direction of the monster and employed Little Nine's toxic mist capability. The mist enveloped the undead soldier, gradually corroding its frame and causing it to fall apart. As Uncle Wang witnessed this sudden turn of events, he was both surprised and confused, observing the soldier's frame vanish before his eyes. Uncle Wang felt a sense of bewilderment as he pondered what was unfolding. All at once, Jiang's voice broke through the chaos asking if Uncle Wang and the others were all right. Startled, Uncle Wang turned his head and saw Jiang drawing near. His expression tightened as he remained silent. Jiang extended his hand to the side and deployed Little Nine's toxic mist, infecting the undead soldiers and eradicating them one at a time as he neared Uncle Wang and the group. As the undead soldiers gradually dissolved from the effects of the toxic mist, Uncle Wang shifted his attention toward Jiang. Holding his sword with one hand, Uncle Wang fixed his gaze on Jiang and inquired how a creation class awakened person like him could accomplish such feats. Jiang halted before Uncle Wang, exuding a powerful aura. He turned towards him with a smile and explained that he possessed a hidden ability known as Toxic Mist. With a relaxed demeanor, Jiang mentioned this and then extended his hand to release Little Nine's Toxic Mist once again. Concerned for Uncle Wang's injury, Jiang informed Zio to help him in quickly transporting Uncle Wang to the portal of the secret realm. 
Jang assured them that he intended to stay behind to provide cover for their escape. His assertion left everyone speechless. Uncle Wang's expression shifted to one of wonder as he gazed at Jiang, expressing concern over the danger. Despite Jiang's divine class abilities, Zio, also shocked, advised Jiang to join them instead of staying behind to confront the undead soldiers. As they conversed, the brunette lady brought her hand to her mouth and fell silent, her expression reflecting uncertainty. Jiang turned away from them, his body radiating a powerful aura. He glanced back slightly and reassured Uncle Wang not to worry, confident that he could handle the situation. With that, Jiang turned away from Uncle Wang and the others, his energy intensifying as he advanced toward the monsters. At that moment, a notification from the system informed everyone that the boss of the secret realm was being summoned, triggered by the number of people meeting the requirements at the final stage. As Uncle Wang watched Jiang move away towards the monsters, preparing to intervene, Zio interjected before he could voice his concern. She turned toward Uncle Wang and reminded him that Jiang was not reckless, urging him to trust Jiang. After careful consideration, Uncle Wang chose to trust Jiang. He tossed the sword to Jiang, instructing him to remember to return it later. Jiang caught the sword and reassured Uncle Wang, promising to return it without fail. The sword in question was the beginner conqueror's sword, boasting 25 speed points. 30 strength points, and a 2% attack speed bonus. Additionally, it featured an already active passive capability. Jiang examined the sword intently, his gaze fixed on the monsters with determination. With Uncle Wang's sword in hand, Jiang saw an opportunity to enhance the attack range of the Toxic Mist ability. This improvement filled him with optimism and resolution. Jiang activated the Toxic Mist ability, causing it to slowly emerge at the blade of his sword. The undead soldiers surged forward, aiming to attack Jiang. However, with great speed, Jiang swiftly evaded their moves. Using Uncle Wang's sword, Jiang expertly sliced through the monsters, infecting them with a toxic mist as he dispatched them into pieces. The monsters posed no challenge to Jiang, who was renowned as the top swordsman in the entire school. As Jiang focused on battling the undead soldiers, a much stronger monster suddenly gained momentum, charging toward him at high speed. This formidable monster unsheathed its sword and carefully closed in on Jiang, poised to launch a surprise attack. Initially unaware of the upcoming assault, Jiang hastily turned his head to see the monster charging towards him at great speed. With quick reflexes, Jiang gathered momentum and performed a powerful leap, evading the monster's strike. The force of the monster's attack was so immense that it shattered the ground into pieces where Jiang had stood moments before. Witnessing Jiang dodge its initial assault, the monster glared at him with a murderous gaze, tightening its grip on the sword. As Jiang was airborne, the monster launched another attack. Luckily, Jiang was able to block the attack just in time with Uncle Wang's sword. But due to the overwhelming power of the monster's strike, the sword lent to Jiang by Uncle Wang shattered into halves causing Jiang to be thrown backward from the impact. Rapidly, Jiang planted his feet on the ground, halting his momentum. He glanced to the side and was surprised to see that Uncle Wang's sword had shattered. The boss's strength surpassed Jiang's expectations. More concerned about the broken sword than the formidable boss, Jiang fretted over how to explain the situation to Uncle Wang. The boss of the secret realm was known as the Undead King, an impressive opponent at level 15. With sword in hand, the undead king fixed a murderous gaze on Jiang. Suddenly, the undead king's body began to vibrate, and in an instant, it reappeared behind Jiang, poised to launch a devastating attack. Upon sensing the undead king's sudden movement, Jiang felt a wave of terror and wondered how the boss had achieved such incredible speed. With determination in his eyes, Jiang locked his gaze on the undead king and summoned Little Nine for assistance. Just as the undead king's sword was about to strike Jiang, Little Nine materialized and seized hold of the blade, intercepting the attack. Little Nine fixed her gaze on the undead king and inquired of Jiang if she should eliminate him. Jiang responded affirmatively without hesitation. Thrilled by this permission, Little Nine rapidly shattered the blade of the undead king's sword with her bare hand. She extended her arms outward her body emanating a powerful energy that radiated in all directions. Upon witnessing the destruction of its sword, 
the undead king grew cautious. Deprived of its weapon, the undead king opted to attack with its fists. Seizing the opportunity presented by Little Nine's distraction, it rapidly advanced toward her, intending to catch her off guard. Suddenly, Little Nine's eyes snapped open, and her body underwent a dramatic transformation. With a determined glare, Little Nine locked eyes with the undead king and deployed her tentacles in self-defense. Taking an offensive stance, she launched a barrage of attacks towards the undead king. Using her sharp tentacles, each strike as deadly as a sword. Gradually, her powerful tentacles began to dismantle the body of the undead king. She started by severing the left arm of the undead king, followed rapidly by the right arm. Little Nine impaled her tentacle into the head of the undead king, causing the boss's body to disintegrate to the ground. Holding the head of the undead king in her hand, Little Nine's body radiated with powerful energy as she approached Jang. Witnessing Little Nine's dazzling display of power, Jang couldn't help but smile in amazement. He marveled at how calm Little Nine remained in the face of such a formidable secret realm boss. Jang anticipated that defeating the boss would prompt the portal to open. As Little Nine approached Jang, an energy crystal materialized in front of him. As Jang gazed at the crystal, he contemplated its purpose and origin. The energy crystal ascended into the sky, gradually drawing magic from the corpses of the defeated monsters. Zhang watched in amazement as this process unfolded before him. After several seconds, the energy crystal emitted a brilliant glow, summoning a giant monster into existence. The massive entity that emerged was called the Undead Tyrant, towering over Little Nine and Zhang by twenty times their size. Fixing a menacing gaze upon them, the undead tyrant directed its attention towards Jang and Little Nine. Jang, observing the transformation of the energy crystal into this colossal creature, began to speculate whether the energy crystal itself was the true boss of the secret realm. Jang swiftly turned his head, gritting his teeth, and commanded Little Nine to target and destroy the energy crystal within the undead tyrant. As the giant creature fixated its gaze on Jang, it let out a deafening roar. The undead tyrant swung a mace at Little Nine, but with great agility, she leaped off the wall, narrowly evading the attack. Having dodged the initial assault, the undead tyrant readied itself to strike again. It lunged at Little Nine yet again, but she swiftly leaped into the air, narrowly avoiding the attack. As a result, the monster's mace slammed into the ground, shattering it into pieces. At the same time as Little Nine remained airborne, with a fierce expression Little Nine constant her intense gaze at the undead tyrant and extended. While Little Nine remained airborne, with a fierce expression, she fixed her intense gaze on the undead tyrant and extended her fingers, sending sharp tentacles rapidly towards it. Despite her relentless assault, the boss effortlessly dodged each attack as if it were nothing. Jang was astonished to see the massive undead tyrant move with such incredible speed. Gritting his teeth, Jang pondered a strategy. Surveying the ground, he noticed several plants scattered among the debris. Seeing this opportunity, Jang decided to leverage his divine creation class known as Spiritual Master. Focusing closely on the plants, he realized he had only one opportunity to execute his mission. Jang acknowledged the incredible speed and power of the undead tyrant's attacks. As the monstrous creature lifted its mace from the ground and prepared to strike, John likened it to a rampaging bull beyond control. However, he recognized this frenzy as a potential weakness. Meanwhile, Little Nine attempted to assail the undead tyrant with her sharp tentacles, but the creature countered by spinning its body at high speed, effortlessly evading her attacks and gaining momentum. Advancing rapidly, the undead tyrant closed in on John. Within moments, it launched itself into a mighty leap. Zhang raised his gaze toward the approaching creature, realizing the impending danger. He had sensed it before. There were numerous hidden passages beneath the ground. As the undead tyrant soared through the air, it seized its mace with both hands, swiftly closing the distance toward Zhang. As the undead tyrant closed in for an attack, Zhang observed its gradual approach, waiting for the opportune moment he prepared to employ his talent to halt its advance. When the undead tyrant drew near enough, Young focused intently, determining that the time was right. Extending his hand toward the ground, a green symbol materialized in his palm. Harnessing his talent, Jiang summoned the concealed spiritual roots from beneath the ground. 
With his gaze fixed upon the undead tyrant, he directed his hand towards it with determination. In mere moments, four spiritual roots emerged from the earth, lancing toward the undead tyrant, piercing its body. The roots ensnared the creature in midair, immobilizing it completely. With his hand outstretched and his body enveloped in a potent aura, Jiang directed his attention to Little Nine, signaling that it was her moment to act. Swiftly, Little Nine approached the undead tyrant, her hand landing on its head, while her other hand readied her claws. Fixing the creature with a deadly glare, she affirmed her understanding to Jiang with a resolute, understood master, as Little Nine prepared to strike. The undead tyrant's expression shifted dramatically, sensing impending danger. Despite its attempts to defend itself, it proved futile. In a swift motion, Little Nine surged forward, her sharp claws and tentacles slashing through the air. With precision, she pierced the creature's body, cleaving it in half and obliterating the spiritual roots in the process. Within moments, the lifeless form of the undead tyrant crumpled to the ground. Zhang, with his hands still raised towards the sky, maintained control over both the spiritual roots and the tyrant's corpse. A sense of pride swelled within him at his victory over the formidable foe. Knowing that his ability was reliable, Jiang felt reassured that he could continue to be a formidable force in battles as long as he utilized his skills effectively. Lost in contemplation, Jiang was interrupted by a system notification indicating that the growth acceleration was now on an eight-hour cooldown. Consequently, the spiritual roots began to diminish gradually. Moments later, the core materialized from the undead tyrant's corpse. Recognizing its significance, Jiang swiftly resolved to destroy it without delay. In a swift motion, Jiang intercepted the core before it could escape, seizing it firmly in his grasp. With determination, he clenched his fist tightly, causing the core to fracture into pieces. As the shards descended to the earth, Jiang fixed his gaze upon his clenched fist, harboring a resolute expression as he contemplated that this marked the conclusion, amidst the aftermath. A flurry of system notifications cascaded, heralding Jiang's triumph in clearing the C-Rank secret realm, known as the Temple of the Undead. Swiftly, the system computed his contributions, culminating in the successful generation of the Secret Realm score. Despite starting at level zero and bearing the class of Spiritual Master, Jiang Cheng achieved an impressive S rating in this Secret Realm. Wang Yi, a level 12 swordsman, secured a B rating while Liu Yang, a level 11 warlock, achieved an A rating. Yi Qian, a level 10 boxer, also earned a B rating. As the heavenly system commenced the computation of team rewards, a window materialized before Zhang, signaling the forthcoming rewards. After a brief pause, the system completed the generation of team rewards, prolonging the window's appearance. Zhang was presented with several weapon options to consider. The first was a dagger followed by a scepter, then a heavy axe, a lighter axe, and finally a hammer. As the spiritual root gradually receded into the ground, Zhang found himself gazing at the system window, lost in contemplation for several moments. He reached into the system window and selected the dagger. As he retrieved the weapon, its statistics became visible. It was Edmu's Swift Dagger, Rank D, providing the user with 50 attack points and a 5% speed bonus. The dagger was associated with swords and offered two professional attributes. Inspecting the blade with one hand, Jiang found it satisfactory, and resolved to offer it as recompense for Uncle Wang. His gaze shifted to the array of equipment displayed in the system window. It dawned on him quickly that all the gear catered to combat needs. Uncertain if there was anything tailored for creation classes, Zhang leaned closer to the system window. He reached in and began scrutinizing the attributes of each item. Opting for the hammer, he extracted it from the system, but upon lifting it, the weight caused it to slip from his grasp, thudding heavily onto the ground. The hammer, dubbed Call of the King, bestowed upon the user a formidable 100 strength points, albeit at the cost of deducting 100 agility points due to its heft. Its unique attribute allowed for a 10% chance to trigger critical damage amplified fivefold. As Zhang struggled to hoist the hammer, he sensed a novel feeling creeping over him. A notification popped up, indicating that he was receiving experience points as a reward. Zhang swiftly comprehended that the system was granting him the experience gained from the secret realm. Despite the hammer's weight, Zhang felt the newfound experience gradually empowering him to lift it. In mere moments, he effortlessly hoisted the hammer, as if it weighed nothing. 
Another notification from the system revealed that the United ability was activated, boosting all of Jiang's attributes by 20%. Surrounded by a potent aura, he held the hammer in one hand, while casually slipping the other into his pocket, his gaze fixed on the hammer. Benefiting from the passive ability of the insect mother, he had ascended to level 6, enhancing the potency of the United effect. With each level gained, he noticed a marked improvement in his physical combat prowess. Lost in contemplation, Jiang was drawn back to the present as Little Nine tugged at his shirt, demanding his attention. Jiang's reverie was interrupted by Little Nine's voice. She gestured towards the system window, inquiring if she could consume all the rewards. Setting the hammer down, Jiang met her gaze, contemplating her request for a moment. Turning towards her, Jiang explained that the equipment wasn't edible for Little Nine. It was meant for Uncle Wang and the others to trade for money. He warned her that eating it would give her a stomachache. Little Nine, upon hearing this, dropped one hand behind her back and touched her lips with the other, her expression shifting to one of sadness as she looked at Jiang. Turning her body towards the undead tyrant's corpse, Little Nine inquired if she could consume it. Jiang realized he had overlooked the value of devouring the remains of the boss. Surrounded by a potent aura, he nodded and granted Little Nine permission to devour it. Recognizing that it rightfully belonged to her, Little Nine wasted no time in approaching the colossal corpse of the undead tyrant. Observing its immense size, Jiang couldn't help but wonder if the boss was perhaps too large. Considering its bulk, he speculated that it might take Little Nine quite some time to corrode it using her poisonous mist. Little Nine stretched her arms wide, closed her eyes, and informed Jiang that she was about to feast. Instantly, her body began to tremble, reverting to her natural state within moments. Once transformed, she fixed the undead tyrant's corpse with an intense, predatory stare, her mouth opening as she moved closer to it. Despite the colossal size of the undead tyrant's corpse, it appeared minuscule compared to the mother insect's natural form. Jiang watched in awe as she reverted to her original state to consume the corpse, a sight that filled him with dread. With her mouth agape, she charged toward the boss remains, emitting a series of ferocious roars as she approached. As Little Nine devoured the corpse, a powerful gust of wind swept through the area. Jiang seized the opportunity to retrieve all the equipment from the system window. With one hand clutching the hammer, he shielded his face from the wind generated by Little Nine's roaring. Although the noise was deafening, they were fortunate to be within the confines of the secret realm. Had this occurred in the bustling main city, their actions would have undoubtedly attracted unwanted attention, regardless of their efforts to conceal themselves. Upon finishing the feast, a system notification emerged, awarding John with 400 devouring points. As he shielded his face with his arm, John noticed that the devouring value was escalating at a rapid pace. As anticipated, the boss's meat indeed held unique value. Jiang understood that consuming more boss-type monsters was imperative to boost the devouring value further. Lost in contemplation, he was suddenly alerted by approaching footsteps. Swiveling around, he gritted his teeth upon realizing that Uncle Wang and the others were drawing near, likely drawn by the commotion caused by Little Nine. With the devouring value standing at 8, 876 points, Jiang approached Little Nine and urged her to revert to her other form swiftly. Little Nine's smile faded slightly as she complied with his request, a hint of regret in her expression. Jiang felt a pang of disappointment knowing that the devouring value was tantalizingly close to being maxed out. Within moments, Uncle Wang and the others reached their location. As Uncle Wang noticed the equipment scattered on the ground, he understood that Jiang had successfully completed the level. Jiang clarified to Uncle Wang the situation with his broken sword, presenting him with the dagger as compensation. Uncle Wang accepted the dagger readily, acknowledging its rarity. He assured Jiang that he wouldn't hold him responsible for the damage to his equipment. Approaching Jiang, Uncle Wang revealed that the necklace was another valuable item, worth a considerable sum if sold. Yi Qian, intrigued, inquired how Jiang had managed to defeat the boss single-handedly. Jiang scratched his head sheepishly and explained that his poison appeared to have a particularly potent effect on formidable monsters like the boss. With a solemn expression, Jiang directed his gaze downwards. The secret realm had been thoroughly conquered, but once a secret realm was cleared, it wouldn't reset. Acquiring the devouring value from another boss would be crucial to kick-starting the insect swarm breeding. If Jiang aimed to encounter a new boss, 
His only option was to venture into the desert. Observing Jiang, Uncle Wang expressed regret that Jiang was destined for the research department. Despite not even reaching level 1, he had already vanquished a boss monster, suggesting significant potential for strength once he leveled up. After sharing his thoughts, Uncle Wang inquired about Jiang's future plans. Turning towards Uncle Wang, Jiang smiled and revealed that he hadn't mentioned it earlier to avoid causing worry. In truth, he had decided to join the Night's Watch. Surprised, Uncle Wang sought confirmation. Questioning Zhang's sincerity in his decision, Zhang nodded, affirming his intention to join the Night's Watch. Zhang disclosed his plan to depart for the Night's Watch in three days' time. Before his departure, he aimed to boost his level, intending to venture into the wilderness for further leveling. Uncle Wang's astonishment was evident, while Yi Qian reacted with disbelief, her hand covering her mouth at the thought of Zhang embarking on such a perilous endeavor. As Liu Yang extended her hand towards him, her expression grave with concern, Zhang interrupted her, his fist clenched tightly. In response, Little Nine's poisonous mist began to emanate from the palm of his hand, a silent testament to his determination. Assuring Liu Yang not to worry about him, Zhang expressed confidence in his abilities and urged them to focus their concerns on the looming threat of the monsters. Later that day, Zhang boarded the train, arriving at the city's outskirts a few hours later. Prompted by the conductor, those bound for the wilderness disembarked the train. Stepping off the train, Zhang wrapped himself in a cloak to blend into the crowd, keen on avoiding undue attention. Pausing to survey his surroundings, his gaze fixed on a bustling bridge teeming with awakeners. Since awakening the system, Zhang found his appetite strangely heightened. What astonished him even more was that despite its instability, his devouring value exhibited a slight uptick with each meal. As Jiang nibbled on a loaf of bread, his devouring value incremented by two points. Little Nai materialized beside him, grimacing at the bread as she commented on its lack of flavor. He determined to find her something more palatable, Jiang resolved to seek out a suitable meal for Little Nine. With a gesture, he conjured a map and unfolded it before Little Nine. The generosity of Uncle Wang surprised him. Not only had he provided the map, but also a crucial storage ring and additional guidance upon learning of Jiang's journey to the desert. These provisions proved invaluable to Jiang. He ventured forth across the bridge, mindful of Uncle Wang's counsel. In the wilderness, the influence of the Heavenly Way rendered electronic devices useless, akin to an apocalyptic landscape where monsters roamed freely, migrating to their nests without restraint. The maps provided had a fleeting utility. Devoid of updated intelligence, locating monster clusters, let alone bosses, posed a formidable challenge. Creatures like firebirds and thunder rhinoceroses, conspicuous in their movements, were among the most prevalent. Areas marked with question marks were to be steered clear of, deemed perilous nests with elevated risk levels. Uncle Wang had advised Zong that the Goblin Dungeon would be the most fitting choice. Low-leveled, abundant in monsters, and less crowded. As Jiang scrutinized the map, he tightened his fist, sporting a smile, resolved to embark on the journey. However, amidst his contemplations, a voice abruptly interrupted, commanding him to halt. Jiang tensed up, swiveling around to face the source of the voice. A cloaked figure stood before him, hand resting firmly on Jiang's shoulder. Eyes fixated with intensity, he questioned why Zhang had ignored his calls, expressing a desire to inquire about something important. The cloaked man inquired if Zhang had spotted a girl with golden hair nearby. Zhang's gaze sharpened, and he denied seeing anyone fitting that description, cautioning the man to mind his words. Simultaneously, Little Nine's poisonous mist began to emit from Zhang's shoulder, adhering to the man's hand. The cloaked man swiftly withdrew his hand from Jiang's shoulder, a perplexed expression crossing his face. Examining his hand, he clenched his teeth, pondering if this substance was poison. He found it puzzling, as Jiang didn't appear to have reached a level capable of such an attack. Nonetheless, he remained unperturbed, knowing that Jiang at his current level couldn't pose a threat to him, a level 27 main defense warrior. With a dismissive gesture, Jiang turned his back and walked away, advising the man to seek a healer promptly, cautioning him about the severity of the poison. He added a word of caution about maintaining vigilance. Despite Jiang's departure, the man couldn't contain his anger, demanding Jiang's attention and questioning his authority to leave. Hearing this, 
Zhang fixed his gaze on the man, his expression turning fierce. As the man approached, emanating a formidable aura, he leveled a penetrating stare at Zhang, questioning his audacity in crossing paths with the S. Xiao family. Zhang's mind raced, contemplating if the man was alluding to the Yao family from the Battle of Heaven. At the man's words, Zhang stared at him, detecting the looming conflict, consistent with his instinct. The man lurched forward, pointing a strong strike, yet Zhang was one stride ahead. With quick spryness, he evaded the assault, looking as the man's clenched hand collided with the ground with horrendous power, breaking it into shards. As Zhang took off through the air, limiting any association with the man, he protected his face with one hand, peering toward the irate assailant with force considerations dashing through his brain as he contemplated the meaning of the Shia family. The man's disposition sold out a firmly established rage, provoking Zhang to perceive the weightiness of the circumstance. With gritted teeth and a threatening glare, the man flooded forward with disturbing speed, shutting the hole between them instantly, drawing his sword. The man recognized Zhang's deafness, recognizing his rival's quickness. Detecting the acceleration, Zhang tossed back his hood, uncovering his decided articulation. With a quick motion, he brought Minimal Nine's harmful fog, covering the region. Staring at the man, Zhang indicated to Minimal Nine that there was compelling reason need to limit themselves any longer. Upon Zhang's order, Minimal Nine emerged from the whirling fog, her look fixed on the man with a deadly force. Understanding Zhang's order, she recognized with a quiet gesture. Seeing the noxious fog appeared to stir up the man's hostility further. He howled at Zhang, addressing whether he really accepted he could threaten him again with a similar strategy. Before Zhang could institute his reprisal, a novice mediated, tending to the man as Yung Tai and stressing the requirement for watchfulness. At the voice, Yung Tai's disposition moved unexpectedly. He gritted his teeth, gradually going to confront the newbie, an obvious feeling of dread washing over him. Zhang watched peacefully, inquisitive about the unfurling circumstance. A figure with blue hair rose up out of behind Yung Tai, hung in a hood, plainly irate. He fixed Yung Tai with a threatening glare, requesting to know why he was available as opposed to looking for somebody as taught. Yung Tai noticeably shuddered, his trepidation obvious as he battled to offer a clarification. Before Yung Tai could express a word, the man cut him off, twirling around with a contemptuous look. He marked Yung Tai as useless, faulting him for little more than inconvenience. The words struck Tai like a blow, rendering him considerably more panicked. Before he could respond, the man delivered a strong punch underneath his jawline, leaving Yung Tai faltering from the effect. Yung Tai lurched back, blood streaming from his nose. The man, an individual from the Shia family, radiated an imposing emanation. He fixed his look on Yung Tai, his appearance deadly, as he emphasized that Jiang Tai was something like a simple lap canine of the Shia family, disgraceful of summoning its name. Yung Tai quickly dropped to his knees, bowing before the man and asking for pardoning. He vowed not to repeat his slip-up and guaranteed that there would be no further disturbances. In the meantime, Zhang tactfully unfolded his hood and noticed the scene without distinguishing the man's presence. It immediately unfolded on Zhang that this individual represented a more greater danger than the prior champion. As Zhang Tai rose to his feet, the man moved toward Zhang with a contrite tone crediting his friend's way of behaving to his forceful propensities. He offered pay for the difficulty caused. Zhang assured him there was no requirement for concern, declining any proposal of compensation. After hearing the man's request, Zhang was met cheerfully as the man ventured nearer, his disposition oozing a powerful energy as he stared at Zhang, proposing a joint excursion to the desert. Zhang, keeping up with his silence, returned the man's look for a few minutes considering his proposition. Walking out on them, Zhang bit by bit separated himself, declining the man's greeting, expressing his inclination for isolation on his process. Noticing Zhang's takeoff peacefully, the man found him charming, mindful of Zhang's enlivening as an otherworldly expert, a heavenly class of creation. As Zhang separated himself, Yung Tai rose to his feet and asked about proceeding with his hunt. The man's look moved towards Yung Tai, and with a steady stare, he dismissed the thought, noticing that the opportunity had likely passed at this point. Having translated the hints, 
The man reasoned that the young lady they looked for had escaped the city and probably expected to navigate the desert toward the closest station. He removed his hood, uncovering his face, and taught Yung Tai not to let her arrive at the inn alive, requesting him to mobilize all scattered workers. The man left, leaving Yung Tai to gesture an affirmation and conform to the order. With a gesture and a quiet affirmation, Yung Tai acknowledged the mandate. The spread of mankind across the planet had birthed various urban communities. At this point, with the stirred period came the interruption of monsters, secret domains and prisons, requiring the constant variation and fortress of human settlements against these strong powers. In the ongoing time, just those stirred people, driven by the quest for influence, wandered back to these districts to fight beasts, climb in levels and gather wealth. These locales are currently normally alluded to as the Wildlands. As Jang crossed the territory, he experienced a multitude of rodents. Following a few hours, he arrived at a barren and frail segment of the city. As he ventured, Jang detected a developing bewilderment. Regardless of his expected objective being the troll monster's home, he ended up meandering for a really long time without appearance. Dusk had dropped at this point. He stayed a long way from his objective. Minimal Nine, sensing her craving, got a rodent and roosted atop Clatterhead. However, she before long found it was an unacceptable feast. Minimal Nine perceived that not all prey was satisfactory, understanding her insightful taste. As they navigated, Jang saw a conspicuous difference. While he had experienced various considerable beasts before, the area currently appeared devoid of them. Such animals yielded irrelevant devouring focuses. There's no time to waste, and Jang realized he was unable to stand to give in case it imperiled his enlistment in the Night Watch. As Jang pushed forward, his center strengthened, lost in examination. Unexpectedly, the sky obscured and downpour poured down. Amidst this storm, an enormous bug sneaking nearby got a quick look at Jang, plummeting with purposeful gradualness. It fixed a dangerous look upon him. Jang extended his hand to the side, inclination the raindrops patter against his skin. Perceiving the mysterious substance inside the downpour, he comprehended that he had coincidentally found a region overflowing with monster lays. Regardless of the initial slip-up in finding the home, he was unable to contain his fulfillment at the revelation. Now, all that remained was to quickly find the beast and fill the devouring measure. Interestingly, minutes after the fact, Jang looked back and detected the animal edging nearer, their eyes locked and a serious quiet fell between them. Loosening up for a few seconds, Minimal Nine emerged, her look fixed on the coming beast. She asked of Jang whether he wanted for her help. Jang lifted his head somewhat, zeroing in on the animal. He answered that mediation wasn't required, as the beast's level appeared low, its size just marginally bigger than the others they had experienced. Jumping all over the chance, the beast landed and prepared its sharp extremities for an attack. With a threatening glare, it lurched at Jang with its piercing appendages, yet Jang deftly dodged the hits with agile jumps. Then, at that point, exploiting the open, he assembled his solidarity and jumped with extraordinary power. Instantly, Jang ended up atop the beast, his clenched hand firmly gripped as he readied to strike. The animal, noticing Jang, shuddered out of uncontrollable dread, trepidation, its psyche dashing with disarray. With a strong blow, Jang struck the beast, sending its body colliding with the ground, life doused, and the floor broke into pieces. As Jang considered, Minimal Nine arose, her hand laying on her temple as she conveyed insight about additional beast's appearance. Frightened by her voice, Jung broke, liberated from his wry, projecting a look to the side, his surprise obvious. The resonating effect of his assault had attracted the consideration of other sneaking beasts. The area remaining atop the beast's dormant body, Jang saw the infringing monster bugs. Responding quickly, he brought the knife he obtained in the mysterious domain, utilizing the harmful fog with assurance in his eyes. He went to Minimal Nine and proclaimed that it was the ideal opportunity for a banquet. Their looks turned deadly as they locked onto the oncoming monster bugs. Jang checked in with Minimal Nine, who confirmed her preparation. Decisively enacting Minimal Nine's harmful fog, Jang quickly charged forward, knife close by. Suddenly of movement, he struck at the bugs, cutting through their bodies and tainting them with a dangerous fog. 
With each fight, their levels flooded quickly, proceeding to connect with beasts along their process. Back guaranteed no less than two additional level headways in simple minutes. The animals fell, either capitulating to mortal injuries or the destructive impacts of the harmful fog. In a moment, the beasts lay dead, forming a hill of cadavers. Zhang drew closer and requested that Little Nine consume the remaining parts of these animals. She enthusiastically consented, broadening her arms wide. Unexpectedly, she stopped, her attention attracted to something moving toward, a presence huge, powerful, and promisingly fulfilling. At minimal Nine's disclosure, Zhang quickly turned his look in a similar course, noticing her elevated energy. It occurred to him that the oncoming substance should be the supervisor. Facing the heading of the looming danger, he expanded. His hand, his demeanor solidifying with assurance. With a signal, he directed Minimal Nine to attack, her intention reflected in his own determination. As the manager moved closer, its outline rose up out of the fog. Minimal Nine, unfazed, launched her attack. Not long after, struggled cries pierced the air. Zhang, hearing a particularly female voice from the animal, turned his attention towards it, his demeanor a blend of shock and disarray. Minimal Nine's misconception became clear as the coming figure uncovered herself to be a lady, not the expected manager. Zhang's assault unintentionally made her dress tear, and she slumped to the ground, oblivious. Reviewing the scene, Zhang contemplated the nature of this baffling individual, uncertain of her origins or capacities. After a couple of seconds, the lady stirred, her eyelids fluttering open, looking up at the sky. A surprised demeanor caught her face as she pondered her surroundings and the situation transpiring. With a steadying hand, she propelled herself upright, the other naturally finding her head as she bit by bit sorted out the situation. Scrutinizing the new surroundings, she reviewed not showing up at this place, her hand still laying on her head as she tried to figure it all out. Zhang gravitated towards settling next to her, his elbows kneeling down as he shut his eyes, a gentle grin gracing his lips as he asked if she was conscious. At the sound of Zhang's voice, she snapped to attention, contemplating his character. Acting quickly, she rose to her feet and immediately reduced most, if not all, connection with him, assuming a cautious stance. Staring at Zhang, she demanded to know his identity and encouraged him not to draw any nearer. Ascending to his feet, he turned towards her and, in a measured tone, consoled her that she need not dread, explaining that he was just a profession transitioner who had wandered into the desert to battle beasts. He further assured her that his intentions were not to cause harm. After looking into it further, she remembered Zhang's personality, setting a hand over her heart. She motioned towards Zhang with the other, fixing him with a piercing look as she blamed him for being the assailant from an earlier experience. Zhang's disposition shifted to one of disquiet after hearing this. He shut his eyes briefly, then with a rueful grin, offered his apologies, conceding that he had confused her with a beast in the past. Surprised by Zhang's attractiveness, she experienced a warmth spread across her cheeks. Turning towards him, she addressed how anyone could contrast exquisite young ladies such as herself with beasts, finding his supposition pretentious. Frenzy flooded inside her, inciting her to madly check her features, ensuring her nose and ears were flawless. Zhang stayed quiet, watching her intently. Reviewing the power he had applied during the assault, he marveled at her resilience as she seemed strong, as though the incident hadn't happened. Considering her character and how she had gotten through his attack, he wound up increasingly charmed. After a few seconds, consoled by her absence of wounds, she progressively quieted down, she extended her hand aside, and the brilliant ring enhancing her finger shined, emanating a lively, efficient power energy. This ring, similar to a watch, enlightened, showing the ongoing time. Noticing the hour, she perceived that she had waited excessively long. With a quick decision, she got some distance from Zhang, energetically determined to leave before anyone could capture her. As she gradually separated herself, Zhang maintained his silence, his look fixed upon her, pondering the reasons for her retreat and the character of those chasing after her. The lady edged further away, but unexpectedly stopped in her tracks, with a hand pressed against her mouth. She anxiously began to gnaw at her nails. It didn't take Jang long to detect the disquiet emanating from the lady. 
Moving closer, he noticed her jumpy disposition and asked if everything was okay. As Tara's grasp tightened, she unobtrusively looked back, eyes shut, offering a stressed grin. She explained that there were beasts up ahead, and lacking ability in battle, she opted to step back yet again and leave Jang to face them. Within minutes, her apprehension dissipated, and she turned away from him, offering a goodbye wave. That's all there is to it, she proclaimed, making plans to leave. Seeing her unexpected flight, Jang's face shifted decisively with a confused demeanor. He watched her go, pondering on the clear misuse of her acting talents. As the rain fell, the lady left. Jang meandered the area, pondering what was happening. The possibility of encountering beasts ahead pleased him. It aligned with his goals, as these specific beasts posed no challenge for him. However, despite the opportunity to procure devouring points, he recognized an approaching problem. Jang's demeanor turned serious as he cocked his head, mulling over the challenge of confronting other work transformers. The desert had for quite some time been an untamed space, drawing in people participated in acts of violence and robbery. Questions crawled into his psyche in regards to the wisdom of protecting the lady he had encountered before, considering the risks implied. As Jang submerged himself in examination, Minimal Nine arose, pointing ahead with a serious demeanor. She made him aware of the oncoming swarm of beasts. Instead of feeling dread or pondering retreat, Jang's face illuminated with charm. Turning slightly towards Minimal Nine, he communicated his satisfaction after finding out about the large number of beasts ahead. His euphoria was brief. Turning his head to the side, he was met with a sight that sent shock coursing through him. Many giant insects arose before him, looking like the ones he had recently vanquished. Among them lingered a monstrous specimen, its look trickling with malevolence as it focused on him. A strong energy wrapped Jang's body, he surveyed the bugs and understood the weightiness of the situation. Engaging a few of them individually wouldn't pose a challenge. However, the sheer number now converging upon him rendered a face-to-face -face showdown unthinkable. As the giant bugs crawled nearer, he kept a steady, focused look at them, recognizing the lady's prior advance warning with growing conviction. Despite being encircled by beasts, Jang experienced a positive feeling. He found comfort in fighting these animals over engaging with other work transformers. As the giant bugs grew progressively upset, their dangerous intent driving them forward with flurry, Jang couldn't suppress his fulfillment with the looming opportunity to acquire devouring value. He welcomed their quick development without a second thought. Jang drew his two blades, his body transmitting an extraordinary and smothering energy as he locked his look onto the oncoming beasts. Instructing Minimal Nine to release the harmful fog, she quickly followed with a firm gesture. Decisively, the fog started to leak from the sharp edges gripped in his grasp. In a moment, the giant bugs surrounded him, jaws expanding wide in anticipation of an attack. Regardless of the surrounding noxious fog around Jang's structure, he remained unmoving for a few pulses. As one of the titanic eight-legged creature thrusted towards him, Jang's movements blurred with extraordinary speed. Utilizing the blades and Minimal Nine's poisonous fog, he flooded forward, slicing through the bug's body in a solitary quick movement, contaminating it with the venomous murkiness in the process. Midair, Jang cast a wild glare back at the beasts, his demeanor deadly as he pondered their newfound speed, a confounding improvement. His attention immediately redirected, another monster bug seizing the opportunity tearing towards him with disturbing speed. As the monster bug crawled nearer, its look loaded up with malevolence, ready for an attack. Jang quickly detected its presence. Immediately, he looked back, seeing its attempt to launch a surprise assault, evoking a sprinkle of shock from him. However, the giant bug's doomed endeavor wouldn't surprise Jang. Just as the monster bug prepared for action, Jang sprang with lightning speed, cutting its body into pieces with his blades. Suddenly of movement, the divided remnants flowed to the ground as Jang smoothly landed. Minutes later, standing with the two knives held firmly in his grasp, his body exuded the poisonous fog summoned by Minimal Nine. With a look loaded with assurance, he focused on the bug's dead structure, sensing something amiss. Despite quickly thwarting the assault and dispatching the animal in a moment, 
he noticed a small cut on his mid-region, a testament to the short battle. As the smaller insects flooded forward with accelerating speed, Zhang quickly grasped the realization that these beasts were coordinating their efforts. A disturbing disclosure. Upon closer inspection, Zhang saw a bug that stood apart distinctly from the others, with six eyes and a vastly bigger size. He quickly concluded it as the supervisor among them. This realization provoked him to consider whether this telling figure was orchestrating the actions of the others. In a split second, a multitude of bugs emerged, surrounding Zhang as Minimal Nine's poisonous fog exuded from his body. Zhang fixed his look upon the manager bug. As opposed to escaping, he remained rooted in place. It unfolded on Zhang that the thousands of beasts occupying the region shared a unified strategy, both in their sheer numbers and their tactics. This realization shed light on why this particular region remained untouched by others. With a determined expression, Zhang fixed his look on the supervisor, examining that the way to overcoming the multitude of smaller beasts lay in vanquishing their chief. However, as he assessed the vast number of animals surrounding him, he recognized the considerable challenge ahead. Lost in his viewpoints, Zhang was startled as Minimal Nine rose up out of the poisonous fog, putting her hand on his shoulder to draw his attention. Arising steadily, her demeanor grave, Minimal Nine guided her look solidly at the manager insect. With a serious demeanor, she conveyed to Zhang her perception of the situation, revealing that the beasts were attempting to usurp their lord. Zhang's confusion expanded at this disclosure. He turned his head slightly towards her, inquisitive about the meaning behind her words. Minimal Nine regarded the beasts with scorn, finding their arrogance striking. With a sobbing signal, she lifted her hands to her sides, tilting her head back to the sky, and released a reverberating thunder. At the sound of Minimal Nine's thunder, the bugs finally recognized her as the Bug Mother. Decisively, the smaller insects dispersed in chaos, escaping at seeing their apparent chief's position. Zhang found himself somewhat shocked, considering whether the beast's behavior originated from their bug-like nature. Minimal Nine moved toward him, slanting her head slightly as she revealed that she had cut off the connection between the supervisor bug and its subordinates. Zhang hadn't guessed that Minimal Nine's capacities could be applied in such a way. With the beasts thrown into chaos, Zhang guessed that overcoming them would now be essentially more straightforward. Displaying his two blades to each side, he fixed the supervisor with a lethal look, expressing his appreciation to Minimal Nine for her powerful intervention. He determined that the moment had come to kill the supervisor for the last time. After hearing Zhang's order, Minimal Nine returned to her original form. Fixing the supervisor with a deadly glare, she responded with a straightforward yet devoted, yes, great expert. As Zhang's body continued to produce the poisonous fog summoned by Minimal Nine, he built up speed, jumping forward with assurance and encouraging her to follow closely. Instantly, Zhang quickly dispatched several beasts with his knives, cutting their bodies into parts. With the supervisor's influence no longer a concern, the remaining beasts descended into turmoil, Zhang surged forward at high speed, dashing among the animals and purposefully slicing through their ranks with his blades. With the beasts now scattered and confused, Zhang recognized that they no longer posed a threat, allowing him to proceed. Immediately dispatching several beasts within minutes, he propelled himself forward with a strong leap, advancing quickly towards the supervisor. Zhang focused his thoughts on the solitary target that remained. The supervisor released a threatening thunder, its look fixed fiercely on Zhang. Undeterred, Zhang met its gaze, declining to withdraw, mentally preparing for the looming conflict. He recognized the supervisor as the ultimate source of valuable experience. Regardless of the supervisor's efforts to defend itself, its attempts proved worthless against Zhang's determined assault. Minutes before it could respond, Zhang descended upon the supervisor, launching a rapid attack on its head with both blades, injecting it with Minimal Nine's poisonous fog. Despite the size disparity, within seconds, the supervisor succumbed to its wounds, falling to the ground. Zhang landed atop the supervisor's dormant form, grasping the two knives as his body continued to emit Minimal Nine's venomous fog. Looking eagerly at the dead body, Zhang resolved that the moment had arrived to dominate the multitude of bugs. Zhang approached the manager's body and gazed at it. 
He was unable to accept he had, at last, won. All of a sudden, a framework window sprung up to compliment him for stepping up. Now he was at level 14, with a power rating of 127 stars. His uninvolved capacities and level-up impacts were as yet dynamic. Jang grasped his clenched fist, which started to gleam. Peering down at it with a grin, he thought about how his solidarity continued to develop as his level expanded. With 127 stars, his battle power was practically equivalent to that of a level 25 expert in the battle class. He started to turn his head back, imagining that now he simply had to gobble up the beast carcasses to acquire eating up points. Perceiving how strong Jang was and sensing the force of the mother bug, the little insects began to escape. These savvy beasts realized they got no opportunity of overcoming Jang. He turned his head and saw the little insects escaping. Realizing there could have been now no threat, it quickly became clear that the bugs understood the situation and were getting away. Although he wanted to kill them for points, he ruled against it, as the main task now was to start rearing bugs. He began walking towards the beast cadavers, and bit by bit, Minimal Nine started to show up through the toxic fog with a lethal look. Jang gazed at the supervisor's body, gripped his clenched fist tightly, lifted his other hand towards the sky, and told Minimal Nine that it was now hers. When she heard this, she thanked him and changed back to her regular form. She opened her mouth, jumped, and pushed toward the manager's carcass. She started eating it up, and a framework window appeared, giving him 600 gobbling up points. As Minimal Nine partook in her feast, Jang went to the side with a serious look, imagining that elite beasts like this supervisor were different because they offered a high eating up benefit. He quickly presumed that hunting and rapidly rearing the bug swarm was an effective method for becoming more robust and chasing more elite beasts. Minutes later, another framework window appeared, showing that his gobbling up value was full. The framework inquired if he wanted to start the bug rearing. Jang took a gander at the framework window and was flabbergasted to see how quickly the gobbling up value had topped off. He soon realized that elite beasts gave many more points than normal ones. After a few moments, Minimal Nine returned to her human form. She stooped before him, putting one hand on her knee and the other on the ground. Then, she bowed her head before him and told him that Little Nine was already ready to duplicate. She requested permission to keep going with him with much stronger power. While Jang's body discharged a solid air, he turned his head aside and stayed quiet for a few seconds, daydreaming. He turned his head towards her, grinning as he concluded the time had come to begin rearing the bugs. All of a sudden, a framework window appeared, informing him that Little Nine had already started the first generation of mass bug reproducing. Jang's and Little Nine's bodies began to emanate a wave of energy. The framework informed him that the accelerated development of gifts and the gift of the development of all things were active. With a serious demeanor, Jang began to take a gander at Minimal Nine, thinking to himself that his detached skills were more effective for accelerating bug rearing after a few moments, the mark of Minimal Nine showed up on his hand. Seeing this, he quickly acknowledged it was a new capacity. His supposition was correct, as a scenario window appeared, granting him two new elite capacities called Bug Home and Territory. Then, another framework window appeared, informing him that the bug rearing had been advanced rapidly, with eight seconds remaining. Seeing this, Jang realized that the bug rearing was almost finished. He lifted his head towards the sky, and what he found before him stunned him. He couldn't resist the opportunity to be astonished and keep thinking about whether this was a settlement of bugs. Before him stood Minimal Nine, with two hands stretched out to the sides. Reproducing itself in a moment, a great many bugs appeared and began zooming around them. The framework praised Jang for effectively finishing the rearing of the primary multitude of bugs. According to the framework, there were a total of 2300 bugs. Jung turned his head aside, noticing the bugs happily, as he felt that the quantity was genuinely noteworthy. He could hardly imagine that the primary rearing pattern of the bugs had produced over 2,000 offspring, and this was only the original. He considered what might occur in the third or fourth generation. One of the bugs moved toward Jang. Sensing its presence, he turned towards it and began to stroke its head. He had an affection for these bugs. Anyway, their capacities differed from little nines. He saw that the bugs had also gained a few new skills. The bug status window appeared, named Child of Nine, Wings of Miasma, flaunting four capacities. The first was Toxic Fog, enabling it to erode and eat up all that it contacted. The second capacity was Disguise, enabling it to blend in by mirroring its wings. The third capacity, Fuhrer, ceaselessly consumed the gobbling up value, briefly supporting strength and speed. The fourth and last capacity was called Implosion. This capacity enabled it to explode its body, releasing toxins and causing massive damage in the process. 
Jang found the cover and implosion skills very useful. While out to lunch, Minimal Nine moved toward him from behind and embraced him. Closing her eyes, she grinned, catching his attention. Hearing her voice, Jang woke up from his daze, turning his head slightly towards her with a grin. Feeling calm, he moved his body towards her gently, stroking her head, and thought with a smile that she seemed to have changed, yet not much. Minimal Nine closed her eyes, put her hands on her chest, and, with a blissful grin, informed him that she had finished the process of rearing the bugs. Then, she took Jang's arm with two hands and expressed her desire to rest. Hearing this, he asked her what she meant by resting. At that point, her body began to vanish. Jang turned his head slightly towards his hand, feeling somewhat confused as he wondered where she had gone. At that moment, a framework window appeared, informing him that Little Nine had returned to the bug home. Jang saw his hand, couldn't resist the opportunity to smile, and felt relieved. The framework space was extraordinary. It could accommodate multitudes of bugs. Now the number of multitudes didn't matter. They could all hide inside the framework, so Jang would no longer fear being found by anyone. The bug home was a new capacity he had obtained, granted at maximum level, meaning it couldn't be stepped up. Jang activated Minimal Nine's mark, saw his hand, and saw that she was calmly sleeping. He recognized that after recreating, bugs needed to rest. Jang recalled his recently acquired capacity called Domain and decided to test it to see how it worked. He stretched out his hand aside and activated the skill. In a flash, his body emitted a strong and choking energy, and his eyes began to sparkle. When Jang activated the capacity, the bugs close by turned their heads towards him, fixing him with a deadly look. Jang responded with a lethal look. Understanding how the capacity worked, he extended his hand towards the sky, and it began to absorb the bugs. This new capacity enabled Jang to control the multitude of bugs. He turned his head towards his hand and realized that using this skill was as simple as moving an arc. With his eyes sparkling, Jang ahead searched in surprise. Through this capacity, he could also tap into the feelings of the bugs. Now, Jang could see the world as bugs did. Looking around, he saw the place teeming with beasts, hidden and ready to follow their prey. Jang turned his head aside, noticing the behavior of the bugs, couldn't resist the opportunity to smile. He realized they were also excited. With a determined look, Jang and the bugs focused on the beasts surrounded by Minimal Nine's toxic fog. Jang ordered them to go after testing their new capacities. Hearing his command, numerous bugs destroyed a nearby building into pieces, getting the attention of the multitude of beasts in the space. Their arrangement worked, drawing the attention of the multitude of beasts nearby. They turned their heads towards the source and slowly started approaching to investigate. Jang decided not to wait any longer and pursued the beasts surrounded by Minimal Nine's noxious fog. He advanced towards the beasts, who soon realized what was about to happen. They attempted to escape, but it was already too late. Just as they prepared to escape, the toxic fog quickly surrounded them. Within seconds, the fog wrapped the beasts, gradually consuming their bodies and causing massive pain. After a short time, all the affected beasts succumbed to the poison and collapsed to the ground. With the beasts now expired, the toxic fog began to consume their bodies slowly. Jang approached the cadavers and examined them closely. With the multitude of bugs, he scarcely needed to take action himself. The range of the toxic fog had extended significantly, gobbling up its targets more quickly and widely. Also, he now had shared vision through the capacity called Domain. Normal beasts could no longer hide from the multitude of bugs. Jang turned his head to the side, noticing Little Nine's toxic fog slowly consuming the beast cadavers. A grin formed on his face as he realized that soon he would be able to raise more bugs. He recalled that he hadn't checked how much gobbling up value was needed for the next bug rearing. With this in mind, he opened the framework window. After seeing what had appeared on the framework interface, Jang was stunned and began to contemplate what was happening and what it meant. Simultaneously, a man showed up at a neglected stockroom close to where Jang was. He illuminated his chief that he had returned. Seeing him back, the pioneer inquired as to why he had taken such a long time and requested him to quickly cover what was occurring in the bug's home. The man, hooded and with green hair, was visibly frightened. He informed his chief that the bug's home had been destroyed by someone strange and unknown. The obliteration was complete to the point that not a single beast was left alive. His superior, a tall man with meshes, couldn't believe what he was hearing. He gazed in dismay, trying to fathom the extent of the situation. He turned his head towards his subordinate and, with an astonished look, asked if this was some sort of joke. He could hardly imagine that someone had completely demolished the bug's home. Another man standing nearby moved toward them, and after hearing this, was stunned. 
the man with green hair stepped closer and, with a serious demeanor, confirmed that it was true, adding that the City of Beasts was in ruins. After hearing this, their chief put his hand on his chin and gazed at the ground, unable to believe the home had been burnt up. It was too terrifying to grasp at first. He contemplated whether the Night Watch could be responsible, but quickly dismissed the thought, knowing it wasn't their style. He presumed that the party in question must be a secretive operation coordinated by a surreptitious family or an impressive attack group. Concluding that retreat was the most prudent strategy, he couldn't help but feel frustrated. They had been tasked with the significant mission of gathering toxin from a wolf bug. With their mission failed, he set out to recover their losses on the journey back by preying on unsuspecting victims. The man adjacent to him, after hearing this plan, turned towards him, his temple wrinkling with sweat and panic. As they spoke, the door of the unwanted distribution center squeaked open. Surprised by the sound, the triplet quickly turned their heads, and the man with green hair revealed to the others that they had an unexpected visitor. After hearing this, curiosity swirled within them, considering the identity of this newcomer. A man approached the door, placing his hand on it, and as it squeaked open, he revealed that he had stumbled upon individual experts. Charmed, the pioneer asked about his identity. The newbie introduced himself as Jang. Stepping into the stockroom with measured steps, he moved toward them, extending his hand in a token of peace, assuring them not to worry as his only purpose in coming was to enhance their abilities. He also mentioned that he had brought food to trade. After hearing this, their chief felt a wave of relief, knowing that Jang had arrived unaccompanied. Turning towards him, he stared at Jang and, with a grin, consented to the trade, noting that food in the desert came at a high price. After his comment, he asked about what Jang wished to trade. The demeanor of the man next to him shifted drastically. He assumed an aggressive stance, fixing a harsh look on Jang. Undeterred, Jang approached the pioneer and met his gaze, reassuring him with a smile not to be concerned, mentioning he had valuable items for trade. At this, the man's demeanor underwent another intense change. He cast his gaze upon Jang, a smile pulling at his lips as curiosity peaked within him regarding what Jang planned to trade. The pioneer directed Jang to reveal his offerings, Right then and there, the two men surrounded Jang, drawing their blades with smiles on their faces. Jang simply turned his head slightly towards them, unable to suppress his own smile. From the beginning, he had doubts about their reliability. Without hesitation, he activated the ring, extending his hand toward them. In an instant, numerous insects emerged from the ring, their piercing look fixed upon the men. Jang turned away from them, his voice touched with irony as he asked about the nature of his product. After encountering the insects, the men hurriedly returned their swords to their sheaths, taking several steps back while remaining fully on guard. Their looks focused on the insects, beads of sweat forming on their temples as fear gripped them. They recognized the creatures as wolf insects, prompting them to question whether these arachnids had somehow survived the annihilation of the bug's home. Pondering this, they speculated whether Jang had been the one to eliminate the insects. Jang's current level stood at 17. He subtly moved his gaze towards them, fixing them with an intense stare. With a grin, he assured them he was well aware of their suspicions. Following his explanation, Jang settled onto a nearby rock, tilting his head slightly towards them as he calmly revealed his growing resentment, urging them to arm themselves and leave quickly. He made his dissatisfaction known. After hearing his words, the three men quickly gathered their possessions, turned away from Jang, and fled, expressing apologies for the disturbance and affirming their swift departure. Several minutes had passed since the men had fled the distribution center. Jang extended his hand to the side, releasing Little Nin's poisonous fog, instructing the bugs to emerge. Jang remained seated on the rock, one arm casually resting on his knee. With a swift motion, he directed the poisonous fog to produce two bugs. The bugs soared around Jang, their eyes gleaming with lethal intent as they scanned for potential threats. Meanwhile, Jang took a sip of the soup left behind by the men, feeling the pangs of hunger intensify. Pondering his decision to acquire Little Nine, he realized he hadn't anticipated the side effects of leading the swarm of bugs. As Jang sipped the soup, a framework window emerged, and his gobbling up value surged, now standing at 2768 points out of 1 million. The framework urged him to increase this value promptly. Initially, he had expected a faster increase in the gobbling up value once the bug swarm multiplied. However, he hadn't foreseen that the gobbling up value of the subsequent multiplication would also double. This development posed a significant challenge for Jang, as the gobbling up value a boss could offer now seemed negligible. Even clearing out all the monster homes outside the city wouldn't suffice to replenish the gobbling up value for the next propagation. 
Jang cast his gaze downwards, lost in analysis. He had been informed that the monster homes and secret domains under Nightwatch's control would remain undisclosed. This implied that to increase his swarm's gobbling up value, he needed to conform to the Nightwatch's directives. He looked at his hand, seeing that Little Nine had yet to awaken. Seeing this, he quickly realized the profound responsibility of propagation. Unexpectedly, he sensed another's presence. His demeanor shifted abruptly as he turned his head sharply, questioning the intruder's purpose. Rising to his feet, he clenched his fist tightly, tilting his head slightly and assuming a defensive stance. The scent of conflict filled the space, accompanied by the sound of many people in pursuit. Confused by the situation and the reason behind the girl's pursuit, Jang remained uncertain of what was unfolding. Moments later, a girl concealed by an invisibility spell stumbled into the warehouse, colliding with Jang before falling to the ground. It was the same girl from earlier. Using one hand to brace herself against the floor, she carefully touched her head, wincing in pain. Jang observed her, his expression a mixture of confusion and curiosity, pondering the unexpected reunion. Meanwhile, as the girl lay on the ground, she placed one hand on the floor for support, the other resting on her chest. Lifting her head to meet Jang's gaze, she immediately recognized him as the boy she had encountered at the bug's home. She looked at him with fear in her eyes, pleading for secrecy about her presence. Jang, shocked by her request, turned to her with a surprised expression. She had been near him, yet he hadn't detected her presence at all. It took him a moment to realize that the person being pursued by the man with blue hair was determined to accompany the girl to safety. He sensed another presence nearby. Quickly, he turned his head towards the warehouse entrance, his demeanor turning serious as he realized it could already be too late to withdraw. Minutes later, a group of people entered the warehouse, including young Tai and the man with blue hair from the Zio family. They advanced towards Jang, and it didn't take long for young Tai to recognize him. A sense of dread and concern washed over him. Pointing a shaking finger at Jang, he informed his chief that Jang was the same person they had encountered previously. The man with blue hair casually slipped his hand into his jeans pocket, fixing his look on Jang with a smile. He praised his subordinate for their sharp sense of smell. Meanwhile, Jang resumed his seat on the rock, his hands resting on his knees, maintaining a calm demeanor. Upon closer inspection, the man realized that the area was devoid of others and Jang was indeed camping alone. With a glare fuming with anger, Yung Tai focused on Jang, demanding to know if a girl had recently entered the warehouse. He insisted on an immediate response, threatening severe consequences if Jang delayed. Sensing the tension, the man with blue hair intervened, placing his hand in front of Yung Tai and, with a smile, asked him to hold off for a moment. Approaching Jang, he settled onto the stone opposite him. Aware that Jang belonged to the deep expert class, he noted how quickly Jang had advanced in levels. Less than a day had passed since their last encounter, yet Jang had already reached. Level 16. The man's curiosity in Jang grew with each passing moment. Deciding to postpone the discussion for now, he declared that he had pressing matters to attend to. As Jang maintained his calm while seated on the stone, the man laid an arm on his knee, drew his blade, and pointed it at Jang's neck with a harsh expression. Curious if Jang had seen a girl with black hair nearby, he awaited a response as his subordinates approached and stood behind him in silence. Jang remained composed, meeting the man's gaze. Jang quickly assessed the aura surrounding him, concluding that his level exceeded 30. Realizing the man's ability to accurately recognize his class and level, Jang hypothesized that he likely had specific detection equipment. Jang gestured towards the back door of the warehouse, explaining to the man that he had noticed a shadow moving that way. However, due to not having the keen class, he couldn't confirm if it was the person they sought. After hearing Jang's explanation, the man rose to his feet warily, choosing to trust him. He also warned Jang to be more forthcoming in the future. Jang, somewhat surprised by the advice, stood up as well. Facing away from Jang, the man tilted his head slightly to glance back at him. With a threatening glare, he warned Jang that if he found any assistance given to the girl, the Zio family would not ignore it. After hearing this, Yong Taiyi turned his head slightly towards Jang, unable to suppress a smile. A few seconds later, the man and his subordinates began to withdraw from the warehouse. Jang moved his body to face them, observing their steady retreat as they faded from view. He recalled that the Zio family held the most power in Genu. Fixing his look on the man with blue hair, he pondered the extensive history of the clans in the city, all of which held positions as feudal lords. These clans were shrouded in mystery and rarely intervened in mundane matters unless faced with significant catastrophe. 
Some of their most powerful members were said to have abilities capable of altering the very fabric of the sky and the earth. This man had greater power than Jang had anticipated, a realization that unsettled him. Being remembered by a person of such influence wasn't advantageous. After a few moments, Jang looked towards the warehouse exit and saw that the men had left. Recognizing that lingering in this spot was unwise, he decided to leave as well. Rising from her hiding spot, the girl approached Jang, placing her hands on her hips as she expressed gratitude for his rescue. Jang rose to his feet, facing her without saying a word. Suddenly, seizing her arm, Jang's action startled the girl, who grew anxious about his intentions. Jang stepped closer, fixing her with an intense gaze and accusing her of nearly misleading him again, just as she had done before. Having helped her again, Jang inquired about her predicament with those individuals. With Jang in such proximity, she couldn't help but blush, meeting his gaze as she revealed her family's enormous debt. She continued to explain that the man intended to seize the goods they were transporting and kill them all, but he hadn't expected her escape. Fearing the possibility of the news leaking out, he had pursued her for this very reason. After clarifying her situation, she questioned Jang about his intentions to silence her. After hearing her words, Jang released her hand, turned away, and started to walk in the opposite direction. Observing his departure, she placed a hand over her chest, feeling a mix of emotions. Extending her hand towards him, she offered her eternal gratitude for his help and promised to repay his kindness in the future. As he withdrew from her, he closed his eyes, fists clenched tightly, and firmly expressed his reluctance to become entangled in her issues. Suddenly, pausing, Jang's eyes snapped open as a sense of unease washed over him. The girl too sensed the shift, and her expression turned fearful. With apprehension, she informed him that a barrier spell had been cast around the warehouse. All of a sudden, a voice from outside the warehouse instructed their subordinates to emerge. Jang turned his gaze towards the warehouse entrance, realizing that escape was now impossible, aware that even if the girl denied knowing him, they would no longer believe her. He activated his bug insight ability. As he moved around the area, he quickly observed that they were completely surrounded. With a determined expression, Jang fixed his gaze on the warehouse entrance, ready to confront any foe. On the opposite side, the girl grew fearful, clutching her chest with shaking hands. Moments later, the man with blue hair and his subordinates emerged, their presence exuding a palpable aura of danger. Fixing a piercing look on Jang, they prepared to deliver the final blow. Sensing Jang's deception, one of them advanced, staring at him and demanding that he surrender the girl.